Wanna run your own Minecraft server for you and your friends? In this video, we'll break it into three parts. First, the step-by-step -step setup. Second, the important things you need to know before hosting. And third, an alternative option if self-hosting isn't right for you. Let's dive in. Ensure Java is installed and up to date on the computer that will host the server, as it needs to run .jar files. You can check this by opening the command prompt from your start menu and typing java space hyphen version. If Java isn't installed, download JDK21 from oracle.com. You'll find that link in the description below. Next, visit the Minecraft download page and grab the latest server file. Create a new folder on your desktop called Minecraft Server to organize your files. Copy or drag the .jar file into this folder. Now, open your command prompt again. You'll need to change the directory to your Minecraft server folder. In the file browser, navigate to the folder and copy the path from the address bar. In the command prompt, type cd followed by a space, paste the path and hit enter. With the directory set, run the server by typing java space hyphen jar followed by the name of your .jar file and press enter. You'll see errors about failing to load properties and the eula.txt, but don't worry, that's normal for the first run. Head back to your Minecraft server folder and open the newly created eula.txt file in a text editor. Change eula equals false to eula equals true, save it and close the file. This accepts Mojang's end user license agreement. While you're in the folder, open server.properties. If it doesn't open as a text file, right click, select open with and choose notepad or any other text editor. This file has many settings, but we're only focusing on the essentials. Query.port is usually 25565, which you'll need for port forwarding later. Set game mode to survival or creative as desired. Spawn protection defines a radius around spawn that can't be broken. Set it to zero if you want no protection. Allow nether enables or disables the nether. Difficulty can be peaceful, easy, normal, or hard. PvP toggles player versus player combat. Max players sets the player limit based on your RAM. Level seed lets you input a world seed, and MOTD is the message players see in the server browser. Save your changes and rerun the command in the prompt. The server should now start successfully. To let friends join from outside your network, you'll need to forward the query.port, which by default is usually 25565, on your router. This process varies by router model, so consult your router's manual or help site. Please be cautious as port forwarding exposes your network which can be a security risk. This is where services like Pine Hosting shine. They handle port management and DDoS protection automatically, keeping your home network safe without any router tweaks. By default, the server uses your public IP address. Find it by opening your CMD again and typing the following. This will show you your public IP address. Never share this publicly as it poses a security risk to your home network. Only give it to trusted friends. They'll connect by entering your public IP followed by colon 25565. If you're hosting and playing on the same computer, use localhost to join. That's the basic setup for a self-hosted Minecraft server. It's functional, but as you've seen, it involves command line work, a powerful or completely separate machine, file editing, network risks that can be intimidating and more. Now, let's talk about some of the downsides and some extra things you need to know about self-hosting. Setting up your own Minecraft server can be a rewarding way to play with a few friends, but it probably isn't worth the extra hassles and hours of work when it comes to bigger servers or modded servers, especially those which might be vulnerable to DDoS attacks. As I mentioned earlier, self-hosting a Minecraft server usually means adjusting your home network, like setting up port forwarding, which some ISPs just don't allow at all. While Mojang notes some potential risks, for a small, private server with just you and a few friends, self-hosting remains a great and cost-effective option. Larger, public-facing servers can be more complicated and it's really not recommended since big servers get hit by a lot of DDoS attacks. Your PC's hardware directly impacts performance when self-hosting, and running the server can significantly drop your in-game FPS, especially if you're playing on the same machine. To keep things smooth, you'll need a powerful PC, since resources are split between the server and the game, potentially halving them or more, depending on power demands. That being said, if it's just you and a few of your friends, don't worry too much about this. Another hurdle is setting up a proper backup system, which demands tricky and time-consuming manual configuration. The upside, if you're knowledgeable about backups, is that you gain full control over your data. Installing mods and plugins is also a challenge with self-hosting. 
We won't cover it here because it's a complex and tedious process that can feel like a nightmare, requiring testing and troubleshooting. But if you're not keen on using mods and just want a pure Minecraft experience, none of this is a problem. Switching Minecraft versions is another challenge when self-hosting, as it often means repeating nearly all the initial setup from scratch, like downloading a new server jar and reconfiguring everything. Once again, if you're not interested in mods, you can skip this headache entirely. Finally, if you and your friends want round-the-clock access, you'll need to keep your machine running 24-7, which ramps up power consumption and speeds up hardware wear and tear over time. For a small group though, coordinating sessions shouldn't be too hard, making this less of a concern. If all of that sounds like too much work, or you want a simpler option, there are alternatives to self-hosting. Let's look at one approach that keeps your server running reliably without the hassle of managing everything yourself. I prefer using a hosting provider, and currently, I'm using Pine Hosting for all my server hosting needs. Of course, that means I'm paying for the server, but for me, the slight cost of a Minecraft server is massively outweighed by the simplicity and the fact that my server doesn't go down when I shut down my PC. I have access to a bunch of panel tools to make my life easier and the support team is fantastic. For those who can't or don't want to pay for a server, self-hosting is an option. But if you're running one for 10 friends and you are splitting a $15 a month hosted service instead, it's only $1.50 per person, making it far cheaper than dealing with setup, management, and some of the ongoing hassles of self-hosting. Plus, if you use the code ATH, you get 30% off your first month with Pine Hosting. Do you have any questions about setting up your own Minecraft server? Leave a comment below. Subscribe to All Things Hosting for more guides, and thanks for watching.